Hello, people of the free world. I know that you're expecting that today we're gonna speak about the memes, but no. <gasps> no, 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 no. Wait, 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 wait. Today we'll speak about something even more funnier. Russian propaganda. And before we'll continue speaking about this weird thing, I'm asking you to consider subscribing to our channel, put your comment and like, or maybe even consider subscribing to our Patreon. So the most, probably one of the most used propaganda narrative from Russia Federation is where have you been during eight years of war in Donbass? I don't know. That's a good question. I don't know. Basically, there are many levels of narrative in this propaganda. But first of all, let's speak about Donbass. Donbass is a territory of two regions, Luhansk and Donetsk. Even despite the fact that they were part of Ukraine starting 1994, Russian propagandists are emphasizing Donbass to increase the feeling of separation between Ukraine and Donbass. Народные республики Донбасса обратились к России с просьбой о помощи. Мною принято решение о проведении специальной военной операции. Ее цель – защита людей, которые на протяжении 8 лет подвергаются издевательствам, геноциду со стороны киевского режима. However, this is not true, and Donbass is inseparable part of Ukraine. Слава Украине! Historically, Donbass was a part of Ukrainian People Republic and later a Ukrainian Soviet Social Republic. What's also ironical that, for example, city of Donetsk was previously called Yuzivka because it was found by British entrepreneur John Hugh. However, after occupation by Soviets in 1924, it was renamed to Stalina by the name of Yosef Stalin. Before Soviets, Donetsk was very European part of the country. There were a lot of young entrepreneurs from all around the world who was creating their enterprises there. All of these developments were destroyed by Soviets after. During national referendum in 1991, 83% of people of this region voted for Ukrainian independence. Because of this region being geographically close to the Russia, Russian propagandists started sharing the message about separation between Donbass and Ukraine for a long 24 years. Political party of pro-Russian president Viktor Yanukovych actually tried to increase this feeling of separation. However, even after them, there was no strong feeling of separation. Остановитесь! For example, even in 2014, after Russia occupied Crimea, only 33% of people in Donetsk and 25% of people in Luhansk wanted connection of this region to Russian Federation. But for example, in 2016, only 8% of people wanted to connect to Russia and 4% voted for independence of Donbass region. 76% of people were happy being part of Ukraine. Knowing all of this, you now can see how miserable propaganda about about liberation of Donbass from Ukraine looks like. On other hand, the role of Russia and the previously USSR on robbing and destroying this region can't be ignored. So now let's speak about what actually happened in 2014. In 2014, a revolution of dignity happened. Moment when people of Ukraine decided that they want to develop their country as a democratic state and overthrown pro-Russian government. And that was a very dangerous moment for Russia, where they were building for long 20 years dictatorship regime. For whole Russia, it was an example that people of the country can overthrow the government and can decide what will be the future of their country. Crimea was occupied by Russian Federation in 2014. They were using soldiers wearing green uniform without any identifying marks. Russia, by the way, told that they have no connection to the soldiers at that moment. With the help of these soldiers and against any law of Ukraine Federation, they announced a referendum to connect Crimea to Russia. That was such a needed win for Russia. That was showing that even if Ukraine went away from the control of Russia because of overthrowing their government, they can still have part of Ukrainian land. And yeah, Russia confessed that unnamed soldiers were part of Russian army only in a couple of months later. За спиной сил самообороны Крыма, конечно, встали наши военнослужащие. Они действовали очень корректно. Но, как я уже сказал, решительно и профессионально. After that, narration of the Putin regime changed. They started saying that Ukrainian nation does not exist, Ukrainian country does not exist, and that the territory of ex-USSR should become modern Russia. And Putin, in his speech, even brought the term Novorossiya. This was a part of the territory during the Tsar Russia. Пользуясь терминологией еще царских времен, это Новороссия. 
After occupation of Crimea, Russian forces with the help of local gang leaders tried to overtake the government of different regions, but they managed to do this only in two big cities, Donetsk and Luhansk. They even announced Donetsk People Republic and also asked Putin to bring army in their territory for protection. And only after that, government in Kyiv announced well-known anti-terroristic operation. Reason for this was occupation of the cities of Kramatorsk and Slovyansk by armed people. Everything separatists were doing that time was looked the same as they were doing in Crimea that time. So Ukraine as a country started just protecting their territory. Igor Girkin, who is a famous Russian commander, even confessed the time that he was leading occupation of many cities. He told that in case him and Russian army haven't joined separatists, they won't have any luck on occupying any part of Ukrainian territory. DNR and LNR combatants were using weapons which were provided by Russian Federation. However, they were always refuting this. And the level of propaganda that time was in Insane. For example, when they were asked how they got preliminary 500 tanks, they told that they found them in mine, and no fuck was given that day by any media in the world. Everyone just accepted this as a fact. After bloody but quick war, Ukrainian army was able to push DNR and LNR forces back to their places and took a defensive stance on borders of these regions. Before 2024, up to 14,000 people were killed during this war. Near 5,000 of them were Ukrainian army forces. Near 3,400 civilians. Based on data recorded by Ukraine, almost half of civilians were killed during 2014. This also includes deaths of civilians from MH17 flight. For comparison, in 2014 there was registered only 25 deaths of civilians. Most of civilian deaths in 2021 were caused by explosive objects, like mines. High level of casualties during the first years of the war can be described by high activeness of the war actions on the whole territory of Donbass. From OSCE reports, we can see that none of the sites tried to kill civilians. However, none of them did enough to avoid incidental losses. Did Ukraine try to stop the war? Oh yeah, we asked from pacemakers of United Nations for 11 times. There was a moment in which uh, the uh, Ukraine has asked for a UN peacekeeping force in uh, the uh, regions uh, of uh, Donetsk and uh, Luhansk. Every time that request was blocked. Guess by who? Yes, they were blocked by Russia. At the time, the Russian Federation accepted the idea of a peacekeeping force, but limited to the protection of OSCE monitors. And there was no agreement in the Security Council uh, trying to make the two positions coincide and for that reason it was never possible to approve in the Security Council a peacekeeping mission. President Petro Poroshenko in 2014 announced truce, but that truce was broken by Ukrainian army after 63 attacks of the separatists and 23 killed Ukrainian soldiers. Russia and controlled by them separatists just don't want to stop the war. And yeah, one day if you hear again that Ukraine is bombing Donetsk or any city on Donbass, just check the pictures of the cities in the internet. And then check Mariupol. This is how Mariupol looked after one and a half months of bombing. Just imagine how this city should look after eight years of bombing. For eight years Ukraine tried to stop the war. For eight years, Ukraine tried to search for diplomatic solution. But Russia is the country from Orwell book, where war is a peace, freedom is slavery, and ignorance is strength. Thank you, and stand with Ukraine.